What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video I'm going to teach you how to simplify complex fractions that have radicals in them. Alright, super cool radicals. So I'm going to go over just three examples starting with this one right here. So we have the square root of x minus 1 over 3 times the square root of x all over the square root of x. Alright, so the first thing that you always want to do is find the lowest common denominator of all your terms. So here you can see we basically have three terms, right? We have this square root of x, we have this little fraction right here, 1 over 3 times the square root of x, and then down here we also have just a square root of x. All right, so in order to find the lowest common denominator, right, the LCD, all you have to do is multiply all your different keyword different denominators together, right? So let's identify the denominators on all our little terms right here. So here, the square root of x, this doesn't have a denominator in it, right? It's not in the fraction, but we can make it a fraction. We simply have to put it over 1, right? And then this one's already in a fraction, so the denominator here is 3 times the square root of x. And then down here, again, this one doesn't have, it's not in a fraction, right? So we can make it a fraction by simply putting it over 1, okay? Now, in order to, again, find the LCD, all we have to do is multiply all our different denominators together, okay? So... Here we have a 1, so we're going to say 1 times, and then we have 3 times the square root of x, right? So we have a 3 times the square root of x right there. And then we're going to multiply that by this denominator, but the, denom the denominator here is a 1, and we already have a 1, so we don't need to include it again, all right? So then here, multiplying everything together, well, one anything times 1 is just itself, right? So then this is going to be equal to simply 3 times the square root of x, right? So that's our LCD. So that is step one. Now, step two is simply multiplying all your terms by the LCD, all right? So we're going to multiply this term times three root x. We're going to multiply this term times three root x. And also this bottom term, uh, and we'll just put it on this side, times, we'll say times three root x, all right? Nice. So let's start multiplying some stuff together. So first, here we have 3 times the square root of x times the square root of x. Notice we have square root of x times the square root of x, or another way we could write that is the square root of x squared, right, since we have two of them. And then we're still multiplying by 3, right? And then we're going to subtract this other one, and as you can see, we have a 3 root x on top and a 3 root x on the bottom, so those simply cancel out and we're left with just what's in the numerator here, which is just a one, right? So we're gonna have minus one. Okay, and then we have our big division symbol right here, or for a fraction, and then on the bottom, we have three times the square root of x times the square root of x, so just the exact same as we have up here, right? So we can write that as three times the square root of x squared, all right? So if we simplify some things, here, whenever you square a square root or square a radical, they simply cancel out and you're simply left with what's inside the radical, so just an x, right? So here we just have three times x, right? So we're gonna say three times x and then we still have this minus one right there and then that's gonna be all over the bottom. So again, this radical or the square root and the squared exponent cancel out. So we're just left with x times three, right? So three x. All right, now you could technically leave your final answer like this, but you could simplify it just a little bit more if you wanted to. So we could also say that this could be equal to, and since we have two terms, 3x and minus 1, we could basically split it into two fractions. So we're going to have 3x and then subtract 1, and then we have the same denominator for both of them, right? We have a 3x here and a 3x here. So then on this side, the three x's, well, anything divided by itself is just equal to one. So we're gonna have one minus, and then this is already simplified. So we're gonna have one minus one over three x. Boom. All right, here's the second example that we're gonna go over. So we have the square root of nine minus x squared plus x squared over the square root of nine minus x squared all over just nine minus x squared. All right, so again, the first thing we want to do is find the LCD. And the way that we do that is, again, by just multiplying all the different denominators we have. So this term, again, we could just put it over a 1. 
This one already has a denominator, right? The square root of nine minus x squared. And this one down here, it doesn't have one, so we can also just put it over one, right? Now, if we multiply all of our different denominators together, we're basically just gonna have one times this uh, square root right here, right? Let's just write it out, the square root of nine minus x squared. And again, anything times one is just itself, right? So the LCD here is simply gonna be the square root of nine minus x squared. And now step number two is again, just multiplying everything by the LCD, right? So we're gonna multiply this first term by the square root of nine minus x squared. We're gonna multiply this one uh, on, on top over here times the square root of nine minus x squared. And then we're gonna multiply the bottom. Let's just put this in parentheses. So we're gonna multiply this whole thing times the square root of nine minus x squared. All right, so simplifying some things. So on top over here, we're basically gonna have the square root of nine minus x squared, and we're going to multiply it twice. So in other words, we're squaring it, right? And then we're going to add that to uh, this fraction over here. And as you can see, we have the square root of nine minus x squared on the top and the bottom. So all we're gonna be left with is x squared on top. So we're gonna have just x squared right there. And then that's all gonna be over this right here, which is, let's write it over here, nine minus x squared times the square root of nine minus x squared. Now, one little helpful trick here is you can actually rewrite radicals using exponents, all right? I know that sounds horrible, but it's actually gonna be helpful in this case. So here, whenever you take the square root of something, it's the exact same thing as raising it to the one half power. Okay, so here we can rewrite this radical, the square root, as nine minus x squared raised to the one half power. Okay, so again, doing this and doing this mean the exact same thing. Okay, and the only reason we're doing that in this case is because as you can see, now we have the exact same thing in these parentheses, right? We have nine minus x squared and nine minus x squared. So to be able to work with it a little bit more cleanly, that's why instead of using a radical symbol, we're gonna use an exponent. So then this is all gonna be equal to, let's see, here we are squaring a square root. So again, that means the square root or the radical and the squared exponent cancel out. So we're just left with whatever is inside the radical, which is nine minus x squared, right? So we're gonna have nine minus x squared. And then on top over here, we still have plus x squared. So we're gonna say plus x squared and then that's gonna be over all of this. Now, as you can see here with this first set of parentheses, nine minus x squared, we don't have an exponent, but we can give it an exponent, right? We can say that this is the same thing as being raised to the first power, right? Because raising anything to the first power doesn't change it, right? So this is still just nine minus x squared. However, that's helpful in this case because now you see we have two exponents, right? We have this one and this one half and they also happen to have the exact same base, right? They both have this nine minus x squared and nine minus x squared. So in order to multiply two terms that have the same base, all you do is keep the base. So the base here is nine minus x squared, and then you add the exponents together. So one plus one half is equal to one and a half, okay? Or we could turn this into an improper fraction so one and a half, that's the same thing as three halves, all right? So in order to simplify this one last time, here on top we have nine minus x squared plus x squared. So you can see this minus x squared plus x squared cancel out. So what we're gonna be left with is a nine on top, thank God. And then on the bottom, we have nine minus x squared raised to the three halves, all right? so. This is fairly simplified, so this is probably fine, but if you wanted to, you could simplify this just a little bit more. So we could say that this is also equal to, well, the numerator is still just gonna be nine, but we can simplify the denominator just a little bit more because this fractional exponent or rational exponent, we can actually apply it to this set of parentheses, okay? So the way that you do that is whatever number you have in the numerator, that's the new power that you apply or the new exponent that you apply to this set of parentheses. So we could say that this is the same thing as nine minus x squared, and then this whole thing raised to the third power, okay? And then the number in the denominator tells you what kind of root you're gonna have. So here we just have a two. So if you have a two, 
that means it's just a normal square root, okay? If this were a three, then this would be a cube root, all right? If this were a four in the denominator, well, you'd have a fourth root, okay? So I think you see the pattern here, right? But in any case, this is just a two in the denominator, so that means we're just gonna have a regular square root in the denominator, okay? So again, either one of these answers, this one or this one should just be fine and dandy. All right, here's the last problem that we're gonna do. So we have one over the square root of x, pl x plus h minus one over the square root of x all over just h, all right? So again, first thing we wanna do here is find the LCD, all right? So the LCD is gonna be equal to all of our different den denominators multiplied together. So this time we have a couple different denominators, right? So we first of all, we have this square root of x plus h, right? So we're gonna say the square root of x plus h, like that, and then we're going to multiply it by this one right here, which is just the square root of x. And then here for this bottom one, again, we could just say it's over one, and then we could say, all right, times one, but that's not gonna change anything, right? So the LCD here is simply just equal to the square root of x plus h times the square root of x. All right, great. So again, the next thing we have to do is just multiply all our terms by the LCD, right? So we're gonna multiply our first fraction by the LCD, which again is the square root of x plus h times the square root of x. And then we're gonna multiply this numerator, same thing, right? Times the square root of x plus h times the square root of x. And then same thing down here. We're gonna multiply by the square root of x plus h times the square root of x. All right, so now let's multiply some stuff together. So here, as you can see, we have the same thing on top and the bottom, right? We have a square root of x plus h on the top and the bottom, so those cancel out. So then all we're left with is the square root of x times one, which is equal to just the square root of x, all right? And then we're going to subtract this one over here, and this time you can see that we, again, have two things in common on the top and bottom, right? This square root of x and this square root of x. So then all we're left with on top is one times the square root of x plus h, which is equal to the square root of x plus h, all right? Now this is gonna be all over the denominator right here, which is just h times the square root of x plus h times the square root of x. So if you found the video helpful, make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below.